Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. As we come together on this fourth Sunday, celebrating the communion of Jesus Christ, just want to let everyone know how much I miss you, how much I miss our fellowship. But I definitely hope everyone is safe, that you're following all the proper procedure and precautions to take care of yourselves and your family. So God bless. I'm going to bring you scripture and a prayer. I'm going to be coming from Psalms 91, the King James Version. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow by that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Thy shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation that was Psalms 91 let us pray dear Heavenly Father you are a merciful and loving God and we exalt your name we come to say we love you and we thank you for another day Thank you for our slumber last night, Lord, but most importantly, thank you for our waking up this morning. Thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we come to you in our time of weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust. For you alone are our hope. Lord, we place before you this COVID-19 disease present in our world in the name of Jesus. We turn to you in our time of need. Lord, please bring wisdom to doctors and nurses. Give understanding to scientists. Endow caregivers with compassion and generosity, Lord. Bring healing to those who are ill, Lord. Protect those who are most at risk, Lord. Give comfort to those who are, have lost loved ones, even right here at Brown Memorial Baptist Church. Welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities, Lord. Unite us as our compassion. Lord, remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. And then, Lord, remind us that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Even now, as I pray, please remind us that your love and faithfulness is still ever-present no matter the situation or circumstance. Lord, I ask a special blessing on our pastor and his family. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Give him the strength and wherewithal to continue to deliver your word to us, even in this new way. Please bless our entire congregation as we adapt to receive your word in this new way, but also to remind us that your omnipresence, your omnipotence, your omniscience and your omniscience. We will continue to worship you however we can and wherever we are. And Lord, 
we will be careful to give you the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning. We ask that you sing along with us right in your home. For we know and we declare that there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. simply want to do is bask in the Lord's presence for in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore there's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope. Lord, I've 
taste it and see of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are
my brothers, my sisters, my friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. On this Sunday in which we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Holy Ordinance of Communion, we invite you to turn your attention to the New Testament epistle to the book of Hebrews, Paul's epistle to the Hebrew church in the New Testament. We want to look at Hebrews chapter 12. We want to read from verse 5 through verse 9. Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 9. Holla, amen. When you've got to Hebrews 12, verse 5 through 9. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Today we're reading from the New International Version, Hebrews 12, 5 through 9. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as children. My child, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as his own. Endure hardship is discipline. God is treating you as children. For what son is not disciplined by his parent? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons and daughters. Moreover, we have had all human fathers who discipline us as we respected them for. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirit and our soul and live? Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Amen. I would like to just think about as... Contrary to human comfort, as it may sound, there is a purpose in pain. There is a purpose in pain. I come to you not as a sadomasochist, not as someone who likes to have pain inflicted on them, but I, I come to you as a messenger that is meant to remind you based on what we just heard that was read. There is a divine purpose for the pain that we go through in our lives. Perhaps you heard the story of, of the young girl who had a, a certain disorder in her central nervous system. And, and no matter what she went through, no matter how she played, if she fell, uh, she didn't feel any pain. If she got injured, she didn't feel any pain, and she was taken to the doctor, and the doctor said the only time the little girl cries is when she's hungry or when she's angry. And because of she's got this disorder in her central nervous system, you've got to be very careful. Because if she plays and gets burned by fire, she simply won't feel it. If she's running and jumping and, and breaks or sprains her ankle, she won't feel it, and she'll just keep on going. In other words, what the doctor is saying in a roundabout way, God made it so that we have pain, that we would be protected from the little pains, so that we would not venture on to the bigger pains. In other words, pain happens in our lives because pain acts as a warning sign for us to stop in our tracks. And if we do not feel pain, then, then we will adventurously venture into bigger and larger pains that that might destroy us i'm just here to remind somebody that if you're going through any type of pain in your life right now there is a purpose for your pain in other words god had made it so that we are as human beings meant to be rebuked meant to be chastised because if we are left to our own devices and do whatever we want to do we'll find ourselves in big trouble that we can't even get ourselves out of. 
in a very real sense. I don't know about you, but, but when I was younger, I used to not like the fact that I had to be disciplined by my folks. Have you ever been there, embarrassed in the street? You fall out and have a tantrum, and they didn't care what other people thought. You were going to get a licking because you had to learn how to conduct yourself, not only in private, but in public. How many of you are glad today that you had some guardians in your life that were not embarrassed enough to pop you in public and or in private to show you that there's a way for you to behave? And there's a way for you not to behave. You ought to give God some praise. Because where would your moral compass be right now if you did not have a parent or a guardian, a mother or a father who would pop you on your fanny when you needed to be disciplined? And it's the same thing with God. We wonder why we go through the things that we've got to go through. Because God all the while has God's hand on us. And I'd rather God discipline me with God's hand on me than God taking his hand off me. When, when you feel and go through the pains of life and when you ask God, why do I have to go through what I'm going through? God is just prepping you. And God is marinating you for something bigger than what you're going through right now. God has a purpose designed for you. And sometimes you've got to go through pain to find out what the purpose is. There's a purpose in your pain. And sometimes we wonder why we never get better. We never grow and we never develop. You can't blame everything on the church for your own spiritual development. We've got to take onus on ourselves every time we get up to give God some praise. I can't depend on anybody else. I can't depend on the choir for my spiritual growth. I can't even depend on my own sermon sometimes for my spiritual growth. I've got to depend on myself. It is up to me to decide that I'm going to, as a child of God, to grow in God's grace. It's a story about a young boy who always used to fall out of the bed night in and night out. By the time he woke up, he found himself on the floor. He would always get in the bed at night. And by the time the morning came up, he'd find himself on the floor until one day his uncle came and, and his mother said, you got to keep your eye on this little kid because whenever he gets in the bed, he falls out. And his uncle teased him the night before. He said, I bet you're not going to fall out because I'm here to watch you. Lo and behold, the boy got in the bed and like clockwork, by the next morning rolled around, he was lying and crying on the floor. And the uncle said, well, why is it? That every single night, when you get in the bed, sometime during the middle of the night, you fall on the floor. And it hit the young man. It hit the kid. He said, probably because I stay in the spot that I get in. That's what the little boy said. He, he said, I probably fall out of the bed because I stay in the same spot that I get in. Can I repeat that again? He said, probably I fall out of the bed every night because I stay in the same exact spot that I got in. Some of you joined church a long time ago and, and gave your life to God through Jesus, but because you stayed in the same spot all of this time, you wonder why you fall the way that you fall. If I were you, by the time you get in, just don't stay in the same spot, but get all the way in in the presence of the Lord. You hear what I'm trying to say? It's not just good enough for you to join church and give your life to Jesus. You've got to get involved. You, you've got to become immersed in his mercy and his grace and know that he's got something larger for you than when you just first got in. There's, there's a purpose in the pain that we go through and sometimes we bring the pain on ourselves. Sometimes we try to find excuse after excuse and blame everybody else for the things that we go through. But sometimes we've got to come to the recognition and the realization that we are responsible for what happens to us. And then even when we're responsible for what happens to us, there are some people in this world that mean us harm, that will do whatever they feel they want to do to us, to hurt us. To make us go through anguish and unnecessary pain. And then we've got to deal with the natural proclivities of life. 
You've got to deal with sickness. You've got to deal with pain. You've got to deal with brokenness. You've got to deal with rejection. You've got to deal with bad news. You've got to deal with hurt. You've got to deal with people that don't understand you. You've got to deal with people that call you out of your name. You've got to deal with people that don't respect you. You've got to deal with people that don't appreciate you. We've got to go through all these ups and downs and proclivities of life. And God made it that way just to let us know that these things that he puts before us are things we've got to deal with so that we could be saved from the even bigger hurts. Every time you go to the hospital, every time I go to the hospital, I'm reminded this is the only life we've got to live. This is the only earthly life we've got to live. This is not a warm up. It's not a practice test. There is a finality in our humanity. We've got to do the best we can with the time that God has given unto us. And every time I go to the hospital and when I see somebody who, who we pray for or give communion to and that monitor is on, I recognize that because they're still alive, the lines go up and go down. They go up. And they go down. And because they go up and go down, that means they're still alive. If that line flatlined and just went in its horizontal direction, that means all life had been taken away from them. You wonder why you go through the ups and the downs that you've got to deal with in your life. It's just a reminder that you're still alive. And because you're still alive, you are still a recipient of God's mercy and God's grace. So even when you've got to deal with the ups and downs and all the vicissitudes of life, you ought to give God praise that one day you're up and one day you might be down. But even on your down days, you're still alive and still have breath in your lungs and your heart is still beating and your blood is still running through your veins. On your good days, give God some praise. On your down days, give God some praise because it means you're still alive and he's still in the blessing business. He's still in the blessing business and no matter what days you've got, you've got to give God some praise. Because you're still breathing and you're still moving. You woke up this morning, not because of your own power. But time, the time the sun rised in the Orient, it was only because of God's grace that God allowed you to see the sun one more day. We made it, as the old timers said, another 30 days journey. Not everybody made it the last 30 days. You ought to give God some good praise. You've been through some stuff the last 30 days, but you're still here, clapping your hands, opening your mouth, singing hymns, stomping your feet, able to shake somebody's hand, pat them on the back. Give God some praise for your life. You ought to shake somebody's hand and say, thank you, Jesus. We're still here. You've got to know the rules of the game. The rules of the game is that you give God praise even during your trying seasons of life. Even during your hard and difficult times. The rules of the game says you always got to give God some praise. If I were you, no matter what, just thank God for the little mercies that God bestows upon you even in your rough patches. Can I tell you that even on your darkest days, God will grant you some little mercies that come as a reminder that he's still in charge. You ought to praise his name because of his regnancy, because of his power, and because he's still in charge. There was a high school reunion and after high school graduation, the students went in their own direction. After 25 years, they came back to reunite with one another. And one of the students went on to become a very well-regarded physician. He practiced medicine all over the world. And one of the other students had grown up and become a well-regarded preacher who was known for his sermons in the local church in the same town that he went to high school in. They reconnected by phone 
And the physician said to the preacher, we ought to get together. We used to spend time as students when we went to high school. And the physician said, well, there's a, a church service that I hear that you're conducting the morning of the reunion. And then later on that afternoon, there's a football game that I'd like to treat you to as we celebrate our reunion with each other. They went to the preacher's church and while they were in the midst of worship, people in the church started catching the Holy Ghost. They started celebrating the presence of God. And some people started to run around up and down the aisles and some people started to shout and dance while they gave God praise. And then the celebration worship service was over. And the preacher said to the physician, what did you think about church this morning? And the physician said, well, I thought it was quite moving. I don't know why you all had to make so much noise. It didn't take that much and it shouldn't take that much to give God praise. The preacher left it alone and then they found their way later on to the football game. And the football game became real competitive and real exciting. And at every play, the physician who was a football fan got up and clapped his hands and made all sorts of noises. And then when the football game was over, the physician asked the preacher, what did you think about the football game? And the preacher said, well, I understand you made a lot of noises, but I don't understand why you had to make so much noise. The physician said back to the preacher, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You never did like football in the first place. For you to understand and comprehend why we made so much noise during the game means that you have to understand the rules of the game. And when the physician said that to the preacher, he said, earlier in church, you asked me what you thought about church. And you said you didn't think it took that much commotion to give God praise. The preacher replied to the physician, well, in order for you to understand that we had to give God praise when we celebrate his mercy and are witnesses to his goodness just means you've got to know the rules of the game. Have I got a witness? May the Lord bless you real good. Is there somebody here who know the rules of the game? During good days, the rules say, give him praise. During down days, the rules declare to give him praise. When you've got money, praise his name. When you don't have money, still give him praise. When your body feels good, shout unto God. When you've got pain and affliction, still give him a shout. When things are good, raise your right hand and say thank you, Jesus. And when things are not so good, raise both hands and say thank you, Lord. Have I got a witness? When you've got friends, praise him. When you don't have friends, praise him. When things are going fine, praise his name. When life becomes a challenge, praise his name. Is there anybody here who knows without a doubt that there's purpose in your pain? That there's purpose in God's discipline? That there's purpose in celestial chastisement? So praise his name. Magnify his name. Shout unto God. Say yes. Say yes. Is it the Lord good? When you get in, don't stay in the same spot, but roll around in his mercy. Roll around in his presence. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Yes. Yes. Find somebody and shake their hand. Give them a fist bump.
up. Give them a high five. Rub your elbows. Rub your shoulders. And say thank you for the ups. And thank you for the downs. Find somebody else and say neighbor. Despite what happens, the Lord is with me. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now, yes! We're, we're all sons and daughters of the true and living God. You know how it was when you had your friends on the block that seemed like they got away with everything and you couldn't get away with anything and you say to mom and dad well johnny does it jane does it and they just said I, i'm not i'm not concerned about johnny I'm not concerned about jane we're being chastised, we're being tried because we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. As always, after we preach the word of God, we open the doors of the church. We're in an empty sanctuary, but that does not stop the doors of the church from being opened. If there's somebody here who is tuning in on Facebook or on YouTube, and if you have not given your life to God through Jesus Christ, or if you're looking for a church home, once again, we invite you to visit our church website, brownmemorialbaptist.org, and you'll be able to leave a message, and somebody will contact you very soon, pray with you, check on you, make sure that you have what you need spiritually for the fight ahead. brownmemorialbaptist.org, the church doors remain open. God, we come before you in the spirit of communion, remind us, O oh God, as we sit around this table and as we make our approach that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would renew with us a right mind and a right spirit. We ask, O oh God, that you would make us responsible for the things that we've set out to do. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us on our job assignments those who are retired, oh God, whatever responsibilities have to take place, we ask, oh God, that you would give us all the strength to fulfill our roles. Bless our families. Bless us as a church family. As we said before, oh God, none of us could eat until all of us have a seat at your table. So we're thankful for what is about to take place. We ask, oh God, that you would bless the hearts and the hands of those who will administer these thy gifts. Bless the hearts that will receive them. Allow it to be strength that we may continue on even during rough times and times when we celebrate. We know regardless of whatever goes on in our lives, you're still in charge and you still have all power. So we thank you for this communion experience. We ask, oh God, that you would come now and make yourself at home for we know that you are everywhere. And you are everything unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.